Hello and welcome to Unit 8 of the Qt tutorial from tutorialcoding.com. In a previous unit I introduced the grid layout and showed how to use spans to create interesting layout variations. But I also warned that this method tends to use a lot of magic numbers, rendering the code hard to read. Fortunately, there are alternatives. Horizontal and vertical layouts can be nested, creating the same effect using much cleaner code. I have created a barebone project. This time the window, window's position is set with the QWidget class's set geometry method. This way I insist on a specific placement on the screen, not just the size. I start with creating the nested layout. The inner horizontal layout has no parent argument because it's not applied to a widget. Instead, it is added to the outer vertical layout as nested layout, combining it, its items as if they were one element. The outer layout does have a parent and is applied to the main window. However, there is another, much more powerful method to get the same result. Instead of nesting layouts, layout items can also be container widgets that have their own layout applied. In fact, this is, this is a common nesting technique for modularized user interfaces that are split into multiple source files. Let's change the example to demonstrate this.
Here I have moved the entire nested part into a separate class that inherits QFrame. I choose this as container because it can be more easily styled compared to QWidget. I have set a border so it shows its outline and with it the gap from the margins of its layout. This widget has an entirely separate layout to which I added the two inner labels. Then I added a new instance of this widget to the main Windows layout. Having its own layout is at the same time a main up and downside. It offers a high flexibility to configure margins and spacing but also forces to manage them individually, introducing overhead and potential inconsistencies. This concludes the unit. Thanks for watching and goodbye.